Hey, what's up guys? So I am super excited today because we are going to be talking about one of my personal favorite pianists of all time, the great Art Tatum. So Art Tatum is a really tough person to try to analyze in a YouTube video because his technique was absolutely off the charts. His harmonic sense and his ear were absolutely insane. So what I'm gonna try to do here is break down some of his techniques and how harmonic tricks and also some of his stride piano techniques and stylistic um, characteristics so that us mere mortals can have some ways of emulating him, understanding how he plays his style and so that you guys can more or less do what I did in the beginning of this video. So without further ado, let's dive right into how to sound like Art Tatum. All right guys, so stay tuned because we're gonna be talking about some of those crazy runs very soon. But first, I wanna dive into some basics here, some really important aspects of his playing, and that is mastering the tenth in the left hand. So if you've seen any of my stride videos, I've talked a bit about this. Um, I'll be sure to link those. But what we wanna do here is we want to be able to either stretch a tenth if our hand is big enough, and I can do it on the white notes, but my hand is not big enough to stretch a tenth on the black notes. So what you can do is hop. You can hop that tenth, okay? Right? And sometimes you don't have to do a full tenth, you could also do a seventh. So it's a little cheat that you can do so to give your hand a break from those big stretches. Now what we want to be able to do is walk our tenths because our Tatum walked tenths all the time while he was playing. And I think that's one of the really great things about how he played stride. It wasn't always just a, a, a down, up, right, bass note, chord all the time. He actually played bass lines in the form of tenths. Okay, now another thing we can do to spice those tenths up is do a little, okay? So of course, as some of you may already know, you can embellish a walking bass line like this. To make it swing a little harder. Now we can do the same exact thing when we're walking a tenth. So what we do is we play the tenth with our pinky and thumb, and then this frees up our index finger to play the fifth, right? Now we don't wanna do this every time like I was just doing it, we wanna do it a bit sparingly. Right, now again, it's tough for me, so sometimes I'll have to roll the tenths. Practice walking tense, what I would recommend is turn on a metronome and pick up a song that you already know pretty well and start trying to play stride with tense, okay? When you play a bass note, try to play a tenth. If you have to roll it, that's fine. And then to get through a 2-5-1, try to practice walking up like that, all right? All right, next up stylistically, we've got a rhythmic trick, okay? so. You might have noticed this in some of what I was doing before, but a lot of the time, rather than landing on the strong beats, so one and three, we're actually gonna land on the ands, okay? So one and two and three and four, we're landing on the off beats on the eighth notes. So that's something Tatum would do a lot. It's a really great way of accentuating the feel and the swing and not sounding stiff when you're playing the groove. So how do you practice this, right? Well, what I would recommend is once you've got whatever song you're working on down with tense in your left hand and you're, you've got the stride going, start with just normal octaves and work on playing them on the off beats, right? So. Now really quick guys, before we go on, if you guys wanna dive way deeper into this stuff, want a bunch of these runs written out, a bunch of different awesome stride exercises that will really help you build up this technique in a very coherent and focused way, be sure to go to jazzpianoconcepts.com slash store. I've got some products available that'll really, really help you focus in on this stuff and master these skills. All right, skill number three is going to be chords at the octave. 
So I've explained this as well in some of my other stride videos, but really quickly here, what I recommend doing is working on seeing if you can move a chord like this. It's just a triad surrounded with an octave, okay? So we got a triad and then the top note is again down at the octave. Let's say we have F minor here, F Dorian. Let's move this chord up that scale and see if we can always have the chord fit that scale, okay? So practice this, practice moving this up a scale, same way you would just take a C major scale and move your chord up, right? Instead, do it with an octave like this. So. And then you can start changing the triad, right? So just to add on to this, what you can do is sometimes only change the, the top and bottom note, so. So sometimes that means you don't have to always switch the chord, but I would recommend starting by moving up the scale and then adding in the skill of not always changing the middle notes. All right guys, so next up, let's start getting into some of those crazy runs that Tatum does. So I think the single most important thing here, guys, is going to be fingering. Now these sound super difficult because they're so fast and obviously you do have to develop some technique to do them, but in some ways, not always, they're, they're still pretty hard, but in some ways they're easier than you think and you can actually do runs like this fairly easily without them being quite as crazy complex as some of the runs that Tatum did. So the most important thing here is going to be fingering. We wanna take a fairly simple run and finger it really well so that our hand is moving very aerodynamically up or down the keyboard, okay? So let's start with a simple one here. Let's do a C altered run. So here's gonna be our, our arpeggio. We're gonna do E, G, B flat, C, then D flat, and then E flat, okay? And here's our fingering. Five, three, two, one, three, two, one. And then this is when it really starts. We do one, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, okay? Now another thing that he often does is he'll actually do an arpeggio and then catch it with the right hand and let the right hand finish it. So what we're gonna do with the right hand is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Easy peasy. So, taking it very slow. Switch. See if you can get that switch to be very smooth so you can't even tell the hand's switched. And now if we do it fast, it's actually, again, easier than it seems, but now we do it fast and So he's just on a C dominant chord, right? And maybe you hit a chord on that last note in your left hand. But this could also work great for a diminished chord like D flat diminished and Tatum often does runs on the dim diminished chords in between other chords. So they're, they're really acting as passing chords. All right, so let's say we're going from C major to D flat diminished. And that works really, really well. So let's say we're going from C major to D flat diminished to D minor, okay? Which is something I did in the intro to this video. And then we just did the same thing for E flat diminished, right? And we moved our arpeggio up to, so it worked over E flat. All right guys, so what we've done so far is a single linear run, right? So we did it with the left hand first and then switched to right hand. But now I'm gonna show you some two-handed runs because Tatum sometimes does runs with both hands at once that just sound crazy amazing, right? So I'm gonna show you a couple different variations. 
One is gonna be where we actually repeat the same thing in both hands and move up the keyboard. All right, so let's do a fairly simple one here. We're gonna do C to D flat and then F to G flat. And it's in the end, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so here's how we do it. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. I'm gonna do two, three in the right hand and then three, two in the left hand. Like that. And then same thing with the F to G flat. But we're just gonna go a little faster. And we could also go up and down as well. Right? So let's have a... Right, so I gotta practice that a little too, guys, but that's a great one you can do. And you can copy that same technique over other runs. Right, so that time I was just doing F to G, same fingerings and everything. So that's a really awesome, fun one that you guys can work on. All right, guys, next up, we've got the two-handed run. So this is gonna be a run that is not alternating at all. This is actually just both hands moving at once. So what we're doing here is literally just being able to do an arpeggio in both hands at once. This to me is probably the hardest of all the runs we've worked on today, but once you get it down, it sounds really, really awesome. So the arpeggio that we're gonna work on today is gonna to be simple half diminished. It works over a D half diminished voicing or an F minor six voicing, right? Um, so the left hand is just gonna play one, flat three, flat five, and flat seven. And then the right hand is gonna do a different inversion. It's gonna do flat seven, one, flat three, and flat five. So practice each hand alone first. So left hand is. And so it's tricky, you wanna work on really getting that transition smooth, but I'm just doing five, three, two, one, five, three, two, one, five, three, two, one, okay? And then the right hand, I'm doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? And together. Okay, and that's what we get, and then eventually we try to do it really fast. So what it's gonna come down to is practicing one hand at a time and then putting them together. And even if you don't nail it perfectly, I didn't just nail it perfectly, you can still get a great sound as long as you don't add in any weird sounding prob problem notes on the way up. All right guys, finally, I'm gonna teach you a little harmonic trick that Tatum sometimes does, a little reharm that you guys can do, okay? So let's say we just have a simple two, five, one and E flat, okay? F minor nine to B flat 13 to B flat major nine. So what we're gonna do here is instead of having the two be a minor, we're gonna make it a dominant. And we're just gonna go up and force through the cycle of fifths, right? And we land back on one, okay? So it's F seven, B flat seven, E flat seven, A flat seven, D flat seven, G flat seven, and then two, five, one. So in the context of stride, let's say we were doing. Something like that. Now we could also make it twice as fast. So we could do it like this and go further through the cycle. So what I did there, just to break it down, I went F7, B flat seven, E flat seven, A flat seven, D flat seven, G flat seven, B7 to E7, to A7 to D7, to G7 to C7, to F minor seven, to B flat seven, back to E flat major, okay? So that's quite a sub there. But experiment with that, it's a really fun thing to do and Tatum throws these little types of substitutions into his stride every once in a while if you go back and listen to some of his recordings.
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope some of these tips are helpful. And also, guys, again, one quick reminder, check out jazzpianoconcepts.com slash store if you want to dive further into this stuff with a good cohesive lesson plan full of exercises. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe and clicking the little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more lessons just like this one that you've seen here today. All right, guys, thanks so much, and I will see you next time.